Welcome biologists. Today we are looking at the movement of molecules across membranes taken from biological membranes from the OCR specification for A-level biology. And the first one we're going to look at today is diffusion. This is the net movement, really important you say the word net, of molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Now you could say here instead down the concentration gradient, it's the same thing, you get the same marks. Now an example of something that can diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer would be something like oxygen or carbon dioxide because these are both small and non-polar molecules. Anything small and non-polar can diffuse straight through the phospholipid bilayer. And diffusion occurs um, until we reach an equilibrium, which is where the same concentration of molecules will be on both sides of the membrane. It is a non-active uh, process. It's a passive process. Therefore, it doesn't require ATP, which is really important. So we need to know about some of the factors that affect diffusion, which is how they do their experiments related to this. So a couple of things that actually uh, change and affect diffusion is first of all how lipid soluble the molecule is. The more lipid soluble the substance is, the more likely it is to be able to pass through those phospholipids. Don't forget a phospholipid is lipid based as well. So if my substance is lipid based or lipid soluble, it's more likely to be able to diffuse straight through the phospholipid bilayer. The thickness of the membrane, so obviously the thicker of the the thicker the membrane, the more time it will take for diffusion to occur. The surface area. So this is why, for example, in some organelles like the mitochondria, we have a folded inner membrane to increase the surface area of that membrane. In that particular example, for oxidative phosphorylation, but don't worry too much about that name of the process. The main idea here is that when we increase the surface area, we can increase the rate of diffusion. Another example would be where I have many alveoli in the lungs. This increases the surface area for gas exchange within the lungs. Um, so the difference of concentration grade or maintaining a concentration gradient across the membrane is also very, very popular on the MART scheme. So, for example, in the lungs, we have a, a ventilation which allows me to have a high concentration of oxygen in my alveoli. I also have a very, very good blood, blood supply to my lungs. And what this does is it aids a low concentration of oxygen in my blood. So I've got a steep concentration gradient. The next one I'm going to look at is facilitated diffusion. And this is where I have channel proteins. Um, and what channel proteins allow is the movement of ions across the membrane. If you remember back to before, anything that's ionic or has a charge or anything large cannot diffuse straight through the phospholipid bilayer. So if it's charged or an ion, for example, these use channel proteins to go through the membrane still from a high to a low concentration. The main difference here between facilitated diffusion and diffusion is that facilitated diffusion requires either a channel protein or a carrier protein. So carrier proteins allow the movement of larger molecules such as glucose and amino acids across the phospholipid bilayer. Again, because they're too large to diffuse straight through the phospholipid bilayer, they must go through, in this case, a carrier protein. So facilitated diffusion, similarities and differences you need to be thinking about here between facilitated diffusion and diffusion. But it's passive, requires a carrier or channel protein, and molecules move down the concentration gradient. The next one is active transport, very popular on the MART schemes. This one moves against the concentration gradient from low to high. It does use carrier proteins and it definitely uses ATP. ATP here because ATP is needed to change the shape of the carrier protein to move the molecules from one side of the membrane to the other. Got two more, exocytosis. So exocytosis is the process by which contents of a vesicle are expelled from the cell. And the way this happens is my vesicle containing my substances moves towards my plasma or cell surface membrane by the cytoskeleton contracting. Then what happens, as you can see in this diagram here, my phospholipid bilayer and the membrane surrounding my vesicle fuse together, and this releases the contents outside of the cell. The next one is endocytosis. It's basically the opposite of exocytosis. As you can see here, I get an influx of substances that push into the membrane and eventually this membrane will pinch off to form a vesicle. Very rarely have I seen an exam question on this. It's mainly exocytosis. So there we have movement across the membranes and you need to think about practicals that might be used with this.
They do link into other parts of the spec, though.